The leaps in technological advancement lately have just been completely nuts. Even my missus was like, Oh my god, it's amazing! I can't believe it does that! She even got so excited that she did her little sex dance. I'll be in trouble for that one. Coming up today, I'll be comparing the new Govee curtain lights with the Twinkly Generation 2 equivalent for brightness and ease of use, but also for the far more important stuff. I'm just going to draw Jeff Bezos' rocket ship here. Like that. My spaceship does not look like a giant cock! Whoa, that, that was a genuine attempt to draw your spaceship! I, I may have jumped to conclusions. Alright, I'm sorry. Language like that on my channel is disgusting. But it was a giant cock, and deep down in Paul's heart, he knew it to be true. And so did Jeff Bezos. Thanks to Govee for sponsoring today's video and for sending me their Govee curtain lights. And also for being super brave and giving me the pocket money to buy the Twinkly Generation 2 for comparison. Today's review comes with the usual disclaimer that Govee have asked me to be entirely honest about their product and everything I say will be proven on camera anyway. As usual, there will be a what's wrong with it section at the end for total transparency. And if you give me any crap about being biased in the comments, Mr. Socky will come to your house and do a shit on your bed, Amber Hood style. Isn't that right, Mr. Socky? My dog stepped on a bee! His dog stepped on a bee. Both products can be used outdoors, which solves a huge problem for me personally, as I've always wanted some waterproof lights to hide in my garden hedges, and both of these products look absolutely spectacular in the garden. Both products work with Google Home and Amazon Alexa, but the Govee Curtain also, like their other products, can be paired with their camera system to reflect the colour of any media playing on your screen. Neither product has matter support currently, but Twinkly does have native Apple HomeKit support, where Govee does not. You could work around this using Home Assistant, and that would give you the usual control of on, off, brightness, colour and white temperature. But both of these products do something far more exciting than that when using their proprietary app. Very exciting. Check this out. The animation side of things is where Twinkly is a little bit off. And by a little bit off, I mean way off. Do you think that's going to work? I mean, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong, that's beautiful. But it's not the image that's there, is it? If I pick Venus, I can't, <laughs> I can't really see a lady in that. Maybe I can see... Is that, is that hair? Like, about as off as that 80s TV show about a boy and his robot. What's that, Robbie? A little girl fell down the well. And you pushed her there? So we could rescue her? We're not supposed to push little girls down the well, Robbie! We're supposed to rescue little girls that fell there by themselves, you idiot! You enjoyed it? You wanna push more people down the well? That show was really weird. And, uh, only existed in my mind. Much like the twinkly animations only actually exist if you squint at them and believe really hard. What is that? What was that meant to be? It's supposed to be that. Apparently it's that. Apparently. So the reason for this isn't just the different style of animation, I'll explain that in a minute. Basically, neither product is capable of doing what the other product is doing in the video you're watching right now. The actual reason for the lack of clarity is that whilst the Govee lights are very straight by design, the twinkly lights are... boingy. They're not in a pixel-like pattern because they're basically Christmas lights. And whilst I really like the twinkly bulbs, it does have an impact on the clarity of the animations. If you're enjoying this, please do me a favor and just subscribe if you're not already. The algorithm is killing me right now and I don't know why. It would be great to have more subscribers and if you're enjoying this, you can watch me do this crap every week.
Uh, on with the show. <laughs> the Mario pattern on the Govi lights was actually drawn by me using the finger paint mode, because there is no way to upload a GIF to the Govi lights, which is a bit of a shame, and it is one of the advantages of the twinkly lights. Sorry to interrupt, this is Paul from the future. I've just been informed by Govi that apparently the GIF functionality will exist by the time you guys get your hands on this, just in the same way as it does with Twinkly. That's it, on with the show. But where I can upload a GIF to the Twinkly lights, I can't actually use the finger paint mode on the Twinkly lights. They kind of both have their advantages. The Twinkly lights finger paint mode is uh, some kind of sick joke. I'm just gonna draw Mario on the curtains behind me. The fantastic finger painting mode. Um, oh, hats. Oh. Uh, a face. <laughs> mm. Jumpsuit. Nailed it. Similarly, I can't see any way to type text on the twinkly lights, whereas on the Govi lights, I was able to write entire sentences up to 40 characters. The Govi lights also have the ability to animate your drawings just by pressing a directional arrow, or even create five separate panels of drawings and have it cycle through them as an animation, like I've done here with the fire coming out of the bottom of Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin rocket ship. Brilliant. Uh, definitely doesn't look like a giant cock. Giant cock. <laughs> as well as finger painting, both apps have an array of built-in animations, and in both cases, there are some absolutely beautiful effects. And whilst Twinkly does come with less effects, some of them are stunning and I wish the Govi lights had them by default. But as I've already shown, I could program them in using Govi's very open-ended DIY mode. And this is another area in which Govi destroys Twinkly. I mean, this is kind of important, but you can save scenes in the Govi app, not only for their own animations, but also for things that you've created. Those scenes will be discovered by She That Should Not Be Named. This means I can create a routine that does this. Alexa. Show me Jeff Bezos rocket. And then there's music mode, for those of you that like to have a disco in your house. What noise is that? Let's try a different thing. So like, you get like crossing, which is that. You can go with dream color. Wow. It's crazy. Super disco in here. Floating mist. Disco. If you wanted to do that with the twinkly lights, you'd have to spend an extra 30 quid on a dongle. Both products can be threaded through your curtains, but only the Govi lights come with wall fixings if you are wanting to simply attach them to your wall. Both products have timers, but only the Govi strip has a function for fading up over a set period of time, which for me has been absolutely invaluable. This means that I can have a wake up mode where it comes up gradually like a sunrise, and this actually gives my circadian rhythm a chance to adjust to light in the winter, which is a huge deal because I live in the UK, where we have a permanent winter. And finally, waterproofing. The Govi product is IP65 waterproof, whereas the Twinkly is only IP44. This means that if you spray them both with a jet washer, the Govi thing will survive, whereas the Twinkly thing might die. So this is some Twilight Zone level stuff here, but both of these products on Cool White actually register at exactly the same level of brightness, which is completely mental. I think you've got more chance of winning the lottery. But unfortunately for Twinkly, warm white and almost all other colors are less than half as bright as the Govi curtain. And blue is dimmer than our old Prime Minister Liz Truss. It just works!
weeks, it just works! She used to have our nuclear codes. In fact, the only category the twinkly lights win out on are for the lowest possible brightness. When set to 1%, the Govi lights are ever so slightly brighter according to my lux meter, but we're talking about a difference in level that is entirely imperceptible to the human eye. To put some context on this, both of them are super dim, which is great if you happen to use a projector for watching TV and you want a very low level of light, or even if you simply want a night light, they go that low. The animations on both aren't amazingly clear if you're up close, or if you don't have your light strips in a very straight, neat line. The Govi lights obviously do a much better job because they're not all over the place, but they're not perfect all the same. I think if you have a gaming room and you had them on the wall, it would be clearer than if you had them on a wobbly curtain. If you have them on a hedge in the back garden and you're miles away at the house, you'll probably get a better image than you will if you stood right up against the hedge. Just think that's worth noting. You can control the Govi lights locally using their app, but you can't use them locally using Home Assistant. If your internet connection goes down, you'll still be able to use the app, but Home Assistant won't be able to control them because they don't have local mode. Some Govi products do, some do not, and this one doesn't. If you're a big Home Assistant fan, it's worth bearing in mind. And finally, as of time of filming, I think that the sunrise mode starts a little bit brighter than it should. If you're a light sleeper, you might find that as soon as it comes on to start its gradual fade, it just wakes you up straight away. Me personally, I sleep like a baby. Both products right this second cost exactly the same amount, bizarrely enough, but only because Twinkly is on offer. Normally, Twinkly retails an eye-watering $220. And the only real advantage the Twinkly lights have over the Govi lights is native Apple HomeKit support. Aside from that, the Govi kit gives you 520 LEDs versus Twinkly's 210, which is completely mental, and they're capable of far clearer animation and with a far more malleable interface. Twinkly has a premium feel to it in every aspect, no doubt, but the Govi app has way more functionality. I think the only thing I haven't covered is that both products do remember their last setting when you cut the power, which is really important if, like me, you cut the power every night. Uh, both of them cannot be cut to length, so you can't make them any shorter. And finally, the Govi lights can be paired in threes, whereas the Twinkly lights can be paired in up to ten. You can buy ten Twinkly lights and pair them all together to make them do stuff, if you're a millionaire. They're bloody expensive. I think it's fair to say that the Govi curtain is way better value for money, and although I really like the Christmas tree light style of the twinkly bulbs, the Govi lights are much brighter and far more numerous. If you're interested in buying them, as usual, there are links in the description. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That would tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube know that you want to be notified when it upload videos. These incredible people running up your screen are my patrons from Patreon, and without them, this channel might not exist in future, because YouTube is really killing us creators right now. The algorithm is evil. If you want to be one of those incredible people and keep me doing this, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal, and either way, I'll genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams and my TikToks too. Come and hang out there, I can be best friends. See you next time. And you pushed her because you wanted to rescue a little girl from a well? Ro Robbie, you're not supposed to do that! How many people have you pushed down the well? This is a weird show. <laughs>